Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a little bit eerier than usual and I don't think this is the right setting for that sort of thing. So, <sighs> okay, I think that's a little bit better. So today I am going to tell you guys a ghost story and then afterwards we're going to go and try to find her. My goal for this video is to become possessed because I think that would be great for the view count. Anyway, before I tell you guys the ghost story, let me give you a little bit of background about me. I have always been extremely interested in the macabre. Um, growing up, I definitely liked creepier things. I was never goth or anything like that, but I did find a lot of love in creepier decor, things that a lot of other girls my age didn't have. Hashtag not like other girls. For example, everything you see here, these skulls and everything, these are not props that I got for the video. These are genuine decor that I use in my room and at my dorm. And I don't know, I like it, whatever. My point being, I have always loved ghost stories. Whenever I traveled to a new place, I would always try to buy a book about local ghost stories. Uh, one of my favorites was a book I got when I was in Alaska because there's a lot of weird shit that happens in Alaska, apparently. So growing up, I learned a lot about local culture. I come from a very small town, but there's a lot of history because it's South Carolina, it's on the coast, and there used to be a lot of plantations, slaves, and general horror stories that didn't need any sort of fictional twist. And today I'm gonna to tell you by far the most popular ghost story of my town. It's one that draws in visitors, tourists, and sometimes even ghost hunters. Today, I'm gonna to tell you guys the story of Alice Flagg. Before we get into the story of Alice Flagg, I'll go ahead and warn you now, this is a very sad tale. It's not like there was some sort of murder or anything that I could even try to twist and say, oh, isn't that funny? This is just sad. So back in 1849, Alice Flagg was a wealthy young woman born to the aristocracy who lived in a town of Merle's Inlet. This is a great place for wealthy people to move to because it had beautiful beaches and even though the summers were hot, there was a nice sea breeze that both cooled everything down and drove away a lot of the mosquitoes. When Alice was 15 years old, she fell in love. Unfortunately, the man she fell in love with was not as rich as her. He was born of a lower class and therefore a commoner in her family's eyes. Alice lived with her mother and her brother who was a doctor and they highly disapproved of the young man that Alice had started seeing. They went as far as to forbid her from ever seeing the young man again. And uh, the story goes that one day Alice was spotted by her brother climbing into the carriage of a young man and he yelled and screamed at her from inside the house and went as far as to run outside and pull her from the carriage and say that you're never allowed to see him again. Her mother is even quoted as saying to her, every woman must leave her mark on the earth and how can you etch your peace into the earth if you attach yourself to this common lumberman? So it was pretty rough. Alice was uh, torn apart by the fact that her family did not approve of the person that she was in love with. So Alice continued to see this young man uh, and it got to the point that they fell so deeply in love that he proposed to her. She happily agreed to the marriage and accepted his engagement ring, but knowing that it would make her family upset, instead of wearing the ring on her finger, she put it on a necklace that she could hide beneath her collar. One night, while Alice was sleeping in bed, her brother came into her room to talk to her and he saw the ring around her neck and in anger, he ripped it from her, threw it out the window and into the marshland below. In absolute grief, Alice ran into the marsh, searching day and night for this ring, but it had already been swallowed by the muddy waves and she never found the ring again. She was in total grief. Her family had placed her under lockdown. There was no way she could see her lover. And in a last ditch effort, her brother and her mother sent her to a school in Charleston, hoping that the mix of the distance between them and her studies would distract Alice enough from going back to see the lumberman. Uh, Alice traveled to Charleston and in school she had become extremely depressed. She didn't have enough energy to eat. She was constantly swallowed by grief to the point that her friends contacted her brother and said, Alice is dying. Her brother, Dr. Allard Flagg, uh, rushed up to Charleston. It was a four day carriage ride. So he put her in the carriage, brought her back home and hoped that by being able to take care of her and watch over her and her being back in her house, she would be getting better, but that didn't happen. Alice, shortly after coming home, uh, fell into a coma and died. 
Alice Flagg died of a broken heart. At her funeral, guests are quoted as saying that she didn't have a youthful appearance on her face, but instead had a face aged by grief and sadness. The story doesn't end there. When she was buried in her grave, people started reporting seeing this ghostly young woman in a white dress wandering the graveyard, appearing to be searching for something. As the years went on, people identified the ghostly young woman as Alice, and she was searching for the ring that her brother had thrown into the Low Country Marsh years beforehand. There's several different versions of the story of Alice Flagg. This is just the one I grew up with. This is the local lore I always knew growing up and people still go to her grave this day because there is some superstition about her final resting place. Supposedly, if you go to her grave and you circle the grave six times counterclockwise, then six times clockwise, finish at the A on her gravestone and then leave a token of appreciation or a gift for her, you'll be able to make a wish and she'll grant it to come true. To add on to that, if you perform the same ritual at sundown, supposedly you'll see Alice. There's even a story of a group of young people who went to visit her grave, and as they stood at the grave, one of the young women in the group felt the ring on her finger move to the point that it flew off and into the grass. The group searched the entire day and finally found it, and they were shocked because the woman admitted that the ring had been stuck on her finger due to recent weight gain, and she hadn't been able to take it off. Another version of the legend goes that if you're married and you do the same ritual, you'll feel Alice pull the wedding ring off your finger as you walk. So, now that I've told you Alice's heartbreaking tale, let's go visit her. Okay, so we just got here. The graveyard is right across the street there. Uh, it's about 20 minutes to sundown, and fun fact, this is an old church I used to go to a really long time ago. Another fun fact is no one cares about that previous fun fact. Okay, so we're in the graveyard, and we are actually approaching Alice's grave now. Okay, so this is Alice's grave. You can see that a lot of people have left gifts for her. And also around her grave is basically a worn down path of people who have gone around and asked for a wish. And one thing that I find kind of upsetting is that buried right next to her, right here, is Dr. Allard Flagg. This is, I don't know, this is her brother, but also one of her tormentors in a way. He's the one who threw her ring out the window, so... Yep, Allard Flagg, and it looks like he lived like 80 years, which is sad because his sister died at the age of 15, partially due to his actions. So, I'm sorry about that, Alice. Around this tree, there's this, uh, there's this, like, pendant that someone hung, and I have no idea what it is, but if you do, let me know. All right, so it's officially past sunset, starting to get dark out here, and I'm ready to try this ritual out. So I'm going to circle her grave six times counterclockwise, then I'm gonna circle it six times clockwise, and I'm gonna offer uh, this ring I got for her. So let's see if anything happens. Okay, so I did the ritual and nothing really happened. Um, I think I felt the ring get heavier, but that might just be because I'm not used to wearing jewelry. But I have one last thing I want to try out before it gets completely dark out here. I am the proud owner of a ghost detecting app now, and we're gonna we're gonna try to talk to Alice. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. So I'm opening the app, and we're going to start with an EVP recording. So I'm going to put it right here on the grave, and let's see if it picks up anything. Hello. Is there anyone here right now? Is Alice here right now? Alice, if you're here right now, can you give me some sort of sign... 
some evidence so I know you're listening to me, talking to me. The next thing I'm going to do is an EMF detector, see if there's any electromagnetic fields or anything. Alice, are you here with me right now? Alice, if you're here, is there any way you can give me a sign? Alice, help. I don't want to make a bad video. How do you feel about what your brother did to you? How do you feel about how your mother spoke to you? Okay, that was kind of a bust too, because we're not getting any sort of recording until I'm picking it up. And I don't want to pretend that. Okay, so it's starting to get dark. Um, Alice doesn't seem to be too lively right now, but uh, Alice, I just want you to know that I am so sorry that we lost you at such a young age. I'm so sorry to everything your family did to you, and I hope that you find happiness in the next life. Not really much more I can do. Um, I mean, I can, I can just say, uh, you to, to Allard. Other than that, I think I'm just going to wrap this up. Overall, I'm still glad I came. It's, it's nice to see how many people have left a token for Alice and how many people can uh, relate to her tale or just feel for her. So, yeah. Okay, so it's the next day. I've had some time to review the footage and uh, the EVP recordings, and I picked up nothing. Yeah, it was kind of disappointing to have nothing happen, you know, not getting possessed. That really was on my bucket list, and it's sad that we couldn't make that happen. But either way, I got to do something that I've heard about my entire life that I've never actually done, and I'm glad I got the ability to share that with y'all. So I hope you enjoyed the story of Alice Flagg. Let me know down in the comments below if you want to see more ghost stories and local legends. And I hope you have a great day.